Joining us now with an exclusive update is Robert Scott Bell. Thanks again, Michael. Always good to be with you and the Savage Nation with a message of liberty unheard anywhere else in the mainstream media but here. And uh, this week, uh, boy, you know, even those people that try to defend the FDA and say, they're, hey, well, they're, they're just trying to help us. They're just trying to save us and protect us. Oh, boy, there's an earful today, Michael, and uh, they're going to have a hard time defending FDA on this. We've been covering this issue of raw milk, right? And not everybody wants raw milk, but lots more people are waking up to realize that's the milk they wrote about in the, in the Bible. And so people are moving back to this idea, the concept that food that's whole and unprocessed and unpasteurized may be actually healthier than that which the FDA says is aseptic, aseptic, no life, no microbes at all. You know, of course, failing to acknowledge, as they usually do, that there are more microbes, there are more bacteria in our gut, in the human gut, than there are cells in the human body. (sighs) But again, they worship at the Church of Biological Mysticism. I call that the germ theory and Louis Pasteur with all of his concepts that it's just the germ, even though he recanted that whole theory on his deathbed and acknowledged Antoine Béchamp, the real genius in France at the time, who acknowledged the role of the terrain, the law of the terrain, the milieu, the environment, that the environment matters, for goodness sake. And real conservatives do care about the environment. You don't have to be a left-leaning earth muffin to like the environment. But, of course, the environment in our body is essential for life itself to beget healthy life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this week we've been covering this story about the attacks on raw milk on the state and also the federal level. Because I don't know if many people are aware that there is a ban in place. The FDA has a ban in place of interstate transport or sale of raw milk. And, of course, that's what the Founding Fathers had in mind when we had this uh, uh, centralized government established. That one day we will protect all Americans from the interstate transport and sale of raw milk. That's all they had back then, raw milk. And, in fact, the reality is there's very few incidents associated with, uh, uh, let's say, microbial contamination or overgrowth in raw milk that are reported every year. The vast majority of contaminations and, and, and danger that we find are was, was with pasteurized milk. So it isn't even an argument that raw milk is dangerous and pasteurized milk is necessarily safe. And we're, of course, not endorsing the idea of taking milk from a cow and letting it sit out for uh, weeks at a time. And then, send, you, know, th- th- you know, again, let's use some common sense here. That's what we can do here on the Savage Nation. The Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund, uh, FTCLDF, this is an organization whose mission includes, listen to this, defending the rights and broadening the freedoms of family farms and protecting consumer access to raw milk and nutrient-dense foods. Any, any problem there? I don't see any terrorism involved there. It looks like a great group to me. And they filed a lawsuit recently against the FDA for that ban on interstate sales of raw milk. And my good friend Mike Adams from Natural News has really dug deep on this story, and we have found out some shocking, shocking revelations straight from, straight from the FDA in this case. And the suit alleges that the uh, restriction is a direct violation of the U.S. Constitution, which is, to me, a moment of duh. Of course it is. But uh, the response to the suit, they're trying to dismiss it, the FDA. And in this dismissal notice issued to the Iowa District Court where the suit was filed, uh, the FDA went public on some things that they don't want you to know about, but I'm going to let you know right here on the Savage Nation. Basically, the FDA says nobody has the right to choose what to eat or or drink. Nobody has the right to choose what to eat or, or drink. What? Are you kidding? Like you're only allowed to eat what the FDA gives you permission, right? The FDA per- permission to drink that? That's fine. Pasteurized juice? Sure. Juice that you make at home? I don't know. Under the food, food safety bill, are they going to be invading our homes, preventing us from eating organic, unpasteurized, unirradiated broccoli, for instance? But I'm going to quote from this. Page 26 of the FDA response to this lawsuit to dismiss here. There is no deeply rooted historical tradition of unfettered access to foods of all kinds. What is that? Is there a history that I'm not hearing about where there was a tradition of restricting access to food in our American Republic? Now, also, the plaintiffs, and this is I'm quoting now from page 26 again of the FDA response, plaintiffs' assertion of a fundamental right to their own bodily and physical health which includes what foods they do and do not choose to consume for themselves and their families, is similarly unavailing because plaintiffs do not have a fundamental right to obtain any food they wish. So this is the FDA going on record and looking at Americans saying, you have no right to choose the food you want to eat. This is food fascism, courtesy of the Federal Death Administration. 
We don't have any health freedom. The FDA said so. Only that which they grant, like they're the king or the emperor. And, of course, now they're very upset about these cow share programs. Michael, I don't know if you heard about the cow share program. What is that? It's not a Buddhist tradition or anything. It's very interesting. It's In other words, people have gotten together and figured out, hey, we're not allowed to buy raw milk, but we want it. Let's get together. We'll all collectively buy the cow, right? Everybody has a piece of the cow, and we'll share the milk. And, of course, that really has the regulators in a stew because they can't figure out a way to uh, cir- circumnavigate that because it's not a law against buying a cow and sharing the milk. But uh, in this cow share program, they're looking for ways to, to work around it. As I said, raw milk tr- uh, safety record is phenomenal, and studies are actually showing that it's less prone to harbor harmful bacteria than the pasteurized what I would call dead nutri- nutrient dead milk that they actually have to add synthetic vitamin D back into. Whereas the real pasture fed cows with their, uh, the milk that's unpasteurized has, it's loaded with vitamin D, which we're hearing all about now, but you don't have to synthesize it in a pharmaceutical lab. Get it from food. Exactly. Now, the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, MDAR, recently sent a cease and desist letter to these buying clubs uh, in Massachusetts, a law that prohibited them from existing even. Again, it's not just a federal issue. Even on the state level, we have food fascism. They don't want people to access food as it's grown, and that can be taken from a small family farmer. The question is, why is that? And then we realize that monopoly concepts exist in the dairy industry as well. You've got big dairy, big agribusiness. They don't like the competition that is growing from the small family farmers that have a few few cows. So we have these large industrial uh, 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 agricultural factory farms attacking the small far- farmers using the power of government and their monopoly protection to destroy the integrity of people like you and me, Michael, and all those out there listening that just want to care for their own health without interference by government. And so they're not satisfied until they have every aspect of our lives covered. Now, on page 27 of this response, this gets even so stunning. Anybody out there who wants to defend the FDA, you have lost it right now. The FDA states this specifically. Americans do not have a fundamental right to enter into private contractual agreements with one another. No, you're making this up. I'm not making this up. It's actually in that on page 27 on our move to dismiss the suit. Private contracts aren't even a fundamental right, Michael. The right to life, liberty, and property, the right to contract is a fundamental right that was acknowledged by our founders and established and ordained in the Constitution. The right to contract now no longer exists according to the FDA. Back in 09, one of our representatives uh, uh, submitted H.R. 778 a bill that would basically reduce or end, actually end all restrictions on the interstate trafficking of raw milk. Can you imagine? You've got to pass laws to ban interstate trafficking of raw milk. And so uh, there's a a link to uh, H.R. 778 about that, just another little thing that I think the American people can do. I'll have a link up at the blog and let you know about that. This is the broad and vagueness of these bills. Every little increment you give them, they'll take far, far more. And as I said, the FDA already thinks in violation of the Tenth Amendment that has the ability to regulate intrastate commerce. But we got to get on the horn here and stop Senate Bill 510 because that would specifically grant the FDA that power to, to just go into any state. You could be just doing something within the state. It's not going outside the state. And they'll come in there and shut you down, Michael. This is the growth of the police state, and it obviously has nothing to do with any war on terror unless we think Amish and Mennonite farmers and small family farmers, you have a garden out back, you must be part of some terrorist plot to take over America nutritionally. No, if we were a nutritionally sound people, we could not be taken over by any foreign agency or government, much less our own overreaching bureaucracy that has far exceeded the bounds of the constitutional limitations. It was you know, basically bound down. The chains of the Constitution, as I believe Ben Franklin had referenced before. Where can we read more? Well, Michael, as I said, uh, I appreciate the opportunity here to share this message of liberty with the Savage Nation audience. Just uh, let everybody know they can find me on the blog. They can Google Robert Scott Bell or go to robertscottbell.blogspot.com. And let's uh, let's salvage what little uh, liberty we have left here and nutritional uh, opportunities we have left here before we lose it all. Thanks for the report, Robert. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Savage. <laughs> 